Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Big Bear Math channel. Today we're revving up for the AP Calculus exam. We're looking at a question from the 2019 BC packet, although this is a great question for both AB and BC students. It's question number one. It is calculator active. And I think the theme here today is a simultaneous rates style question, the rate at which one quantity enters while another quantity uh, or that same quantity is exiting at the same time. And so today it just happens to be fish entering a lake and leaving the lake. So let's see here. So let's see if we can scroll down and dive right into this big bear. And so using your technology, I'm using a TI-84 Plus and I'm guessing you're using something fairly similar. Uh, the first thing you notice right away is we've got the function e of t. This is the rate at which fish are entering the tank or the lake or whatever it might be. And then we also have the rate at which the fish are leaving that lake. Okay. So both L or E of T and L of T are measured in fish per hour. And I guess what's not explicitly mentioned right in here is that the initial number of fish in that lake is going to be zero. Okay. That's going to come into play later down the road. So what's, what do we got cooking here in part A? They're talking about, they asked me how many, and I think th those two little words are really powerful. How many fish entered the lake? That's all we're worried about is how many entered. We don't care how many left the lake during that time period. Uh, from midnight until 5 a.m. and give a reason for your answer. So this all revolves around the net change theorem here. And in general sense, we're saying, okay, let's say capital F prime of X is some rate of change. Anytime you integrate that rate of change, you are producing or getting the net change in the original function f. So a lot of times when you see this phrase, how many, how many, a lot of times I'm going to bet on you're going to want to use that net change theorem. So if we set this bear up, we're going to integrate e of t from 0 to 5. We're going to pop that bear in our calculator. And we're going to end up with, and they do want it to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to round it off. I got 153 fish have entered the tank or the lake between midnight and 5 a.m. Sliding into part B, we want to find the average number of fish that leave the pond over that five-hour period from midnight to 5 a.m. And so this um, average value function here, this is, a, this is a tremendous image rate. So if I try to apply that formula to the rate at which the fish are leaving, so if we're able to apply this formula to the, this particular question, we're looking at the average number of fish that leave per hour. Let's see, we're gonna do 1 over 5 minus 0, integral from 0 to 5. We want fish leaving, so we'll use the L of T function. Again, fire that into your calculator, and you're going to get about an average of 6.059 fish leaving per hour. Okay, we'll say fish leaving per hour. And it seems like a reasonable function. Um, what I guess one way to kind of a safety check here is, I guess if I'm going to forget anything, sometimes I forget my coefficient. And if I forget my coefficient, then my answer is going to be way too big. And, and a lot of times I'll catch it. I'm like, wait a minute, that's just totally unreasonable. Um, and, and, and we can kind of backtrack and, and find out that we need that coefficient. Okay, in C. What is the greatest number of fish in the lake? So we're looking for an absolute maximum value. What is the absolute maximum value? So the first thing you're going to see me try to do here is I'm going to try to create a function that models just the number of fish in the lake at any time t. So I'm going to use the function a of t, a for the amount of fish. You can use any letter you want there. A lot of people like to use p of t for population. And it's going to be the number of fish that have entered the lake, and I'm going to use e of x, where x is my dummy variable, minus um, the number of fish that have left the lake. And again, that's going to need to be an x right there, dx. Okay. Now, normally I would have like plus some random number right here that would take into account how much, uh, how many fish there were initially at t equals zero. But if we said that the lake is empty at t equals zero, then we don't have a number here. But in a lot of other problems you would. 
Now, to find the greatest number of fish or to find the absolute max, I need to first find any critical points that this function might have. So I'm going to go ahead and derive this function using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. All right. There's no need to use what we call the chain rule here because the upper bound was just a singular t. Now, if that upper bound had been t squared or 2t, uh, applying the chain rule would have been very valuable. And I'm going to set that derivative equal to 0. I'm going to add uh, the L of t function to the other side. On my calculator, I'm going to graph E of t and L of t and find the intersection. And my calculator is saying they're going to intersect at 6.203. Five, six, yada, yada, yada. What I'm going to do is I'm going to exit back to my home screen and I'm going to store that value in something like an alpha B. All right. So now we're going to go and uh, just to finish this off, that's a critical point. I don't know if it's a relative max, a relative min, and even if it is a relative max, um, you know, I guess I, I want to try to prove that it's an absolute max as well. And so I'm going to construct a table of values. My, I'm going to use my endpoints my critical point, and then my second endpoint. And I'm going to plug all of these back into the A of T function to find out how many fish there are. There are zero fish at T equals zero. If I substitute a B up here for this upper bound and throw it into my calculator, I'm going to get about 135. And I'll do some decimals just to be exact, 105. And then when I did an integral from zero to eight, instead of zero to B, I got 80.8. Let's see, I got to round a little bit. How about 920? Okay, time to put the finishing touch on. So they want to know at what time did we reach the greatest number of fish in the lake? And so we could say at t equals 6.204 hours is when the greatest number of fish in the lake is. Now, last but not least, part D is one of my favorite questions. And they asked you, hey, is the rate of change in the number of fish in the lake increasing or decreasing specifically at 5 a.m. Well, here's what you want to recall. That function that we wrote back in part C, A of T, that was just for the number of fish, okay? Now, when we derived that function and got A prime of T, this is now a function that models the rate at which the number of fish is changing, okay? So another way to phrase this question is to say, okay, is A prime of T increasing or decreasing at 5? Well, the only way to know whether this function right here is increasing or decreasing is to take another derivative. All right. So we could say A prime of T is going to be equal to E prime of T minus L prime of T. And what I want to do is I want to evaluate this A double prime function specifically at 5. And in a nutshell, if I get a positive answer, I could backtrack and say A prime's increasing. Or if I get a negative answer, I can go back and say A prime's decreasing at this particular moment. So on my calculator, I'm evaluating E prime of 5 minus L prime of 5. I got about negative 10.723. Which is certainly less than zero. So at the end of the day, we are gonna say that, let's see, the rate of change in the number of fish is decreasing at 5 a.m. So here's how I wrote it out. Um, and basically, I, I did a, mostly I was just kind of recopying that phrase there. The rate of change in the number of fish in the lake is decreasing at t equals five because E prime of five minus L prime of five is less than zero. So there it is. I hope that we took a big step closer uh, to getting you towards your dream goal of re earning a five on this exam. If you found this helpful and you like this video, please hit subscribe below, share it with your friends, and let's tackle this bear together.